as the motoring world moved towards electrification, normal cars tend to be quite easy to do in some respects. Now, I don't want to take anything away from engineers by that, but packaging batteries in big SUVs or luxury cars or even small family hatchbacks isn't really that difficult because obviously there's normally an internal combustion engine in there. But the one car that's going to be very difficult to do with is the sports car. Now, this is a Caterham 7. And it started life as the Lotus 7. And of course, Colin Chapman, Lotus's founder, had a very simple ethos when it came to his cars. It was simply simplify, then add lightness. But as we know, batteries and electric motors are anything but light. Now, Caterham cars have been building the 7 for 50 years now. In fact, in some respects, they're probably more known for the 7 than even Lotus are. So how are Caterham going to adapt in a new electrified world? Well, they're going to do it by being radical. Welcome to this week's edition of Sneak Peaks. Welcome to the Caterham Project V. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> now, before we get started on this week's edition of Sneak Peaks and of course the new Caterham Project V, it is of course that time where I'm gonna ask you to make sure that you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Then once you've done that, make sure you press the little bell button down below because then that way you'll be notified when our next video is uploaded and goes live. Once you've watched the video, if you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget, leave us your comments down below as well. Let me know what your thoughts are on the cars that we feature on the channel, such as Caterham's new Project V, and of course, on the Auto EV channel as a whole. So the first thing really to point out is, first of all, this is a concept, but it is an idea that Caterham have had about how they're going to move the company forward and how they're going to embrace electrification, moving into that brave new world and how a sports car can be adapted certainly one wearing a Caterham badge, because remember, it's all about lightweight with Caterham, and how that can be um, sort of like channeled into sort of like the electric world with a lightweight sports car. Now, the Project V got its first debut at the 2023 Goodwood Festival of Speed, where we did feature it in that video of ours, and we also saw a sort of like another Caterham, a 7, that had been electrified as well. But it's this one that Caterham are showing and as I say, it's the one that they're trying to gauge public reaction to and to see whether or not this is a marketplace where they want to move into. Now, Caterham as a company has changed. It has now changed ownership. And of course, they've got aspirations of you know, more volume. And of course, they've got to attract more customers because there's only so many customers that will appreciate something like a Caterham 7. If the company is to grow and dare I suggest make money, then it needs to bring in new people. And of course, as those Caterham 7 customers grow themselves, perhaps with children and such, and we'll see why later. How do you keep those in the brand? Well, by doing something like this. So the first thing to talk about is the way that the car looks. And obviously you can't just make a bigger seven. That's not gonna happen, is it? You have to take on a new sort of like design ethos. There are some Caterham cues that you'll see around the car, of course. And there's a little bit of the Caterham 21, I think, round about this kind of front end. Now, if you're a younger viewer, you might not know what the Caterham 21 is, but way back when, Caterham did try this sort of thing to make a more practical seven before, and they brought a card out called the 21. Didn't really be, wasn't really successful for them, but I can see an element of that in this front end design. Now, it's been designed by a man called Anthony Giannarelli. Now, um, he had his own car company, Giannarelli Automotive, and they had a car called the Design One. And I think it's a bit of a, an old ethos of, well, you know, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer, because that Design One was very much a Caterham style of car. Well, he's now head of design for Caterham cars themselves, and he's come up with a shape that I think looks absolutely out of this world, and where should wear the Caterham badge with pride. Now, to give you a little idea in terms of the size of the car, think Porsche Cayman, think Lotus Amira. And I've just got my notebook here because I've just noted some of the sizes down to let you see the kind of size that you're looking at with the car. So it's round about 4.2 metres long. A, K a Cayman is 4.3 metres long. It's 1.8 metres wide, it's exactly the same as the Cayman, and about 1.2 metres high. A Cayman is just under 1.3 metres high. The Amira. 4.4 meters long, 1.985 meters wide, and 1.22 high. So it's exactly the sort of footprint that you're gonna be looking at for something like a Porsche Cayman or a Lotus Amira. There's a little bit more practicality about the car, however, because at the moment you can have the car, or potentially, if it goes into production, you would have the car as either a two plus one seating arrangement or an optional two plus two seating arrangement. But of course, that seating arrangement isn't available on a Cayman at all. You've got to move up to a 911 before you're into that. But this front end design is very, very distinctive. You've got these kind of flowing 
sort of like wheel arches just seem to sort of like curve over the top of these uh, 19 inch wheels. 19 inch wheels at the front, 20s at the back, the single cowled LED headlamp in here and then again this sort of like really interesting kind of frontal aspect to the car. You also got some cooling down at the bottom here with this grill but you've got almost a kind of split with the diffuser and the bodywork look almost separate like the, the sorry the splitter where it's almost kind of floating just below the bodywork as well. I think it's a really interesting design trick but there's lots of, sort of like nice sort of like use of light signatures in here as well. I think this is going to be Caterham's really design language going forward. As I say, it's very, very difficult when you've just been producing the same kind of car for the past 50 years and it wasn't even your design. How do you make your own stamp on something? And I think that's what they've done with this. I think Giannarelli's done a really, really good job with this car. And as you move along the side, you can see elements of other cars that they've got into the design. Jaguar CX-75, I think, round about these kind of wheel arch and light signature areas. The little Di Tommaso Vallelunga um, from very you know, years ago. It's that kind of compact, small, kind of, you know, sort of like slinky little sports car that looks just right, I think. The proportions of the car really look fantastic. You've got this lovely kind of sort of like cut out here, the bottom sort of like section of the door, and then this black kind of side sill again, just pinching the bodywork and making it look really sort of like low and sleek. And I see these 20 inch wheels at the back, again, like the front, the nice kind of wheel arch curve just over the back. And then again, like the front, you've got this kind of separate kind of bumper and then rear kind of diffuser as well, as all truncates into this cam tail. Big glass rear screen as well. So good practicality from a visibility point of view, not something you can always say about a Caterham. Now the chassis of the Project V is a completely new one, it's not just a widened and lengthened Caterham uh, 7 chassis. It is a carbon fibre and aluminium composite um, chassis with a composite bodywork over the, stretched over the top of it. Double wishbone suspension, front and rear. And you've got 19 inch alloys at the front, 20 inches at the rear. And they're currently wearing um, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. So you can see that very much that enthusiast uh, bias tyres. Ventilated discs all round. So again, it's very much leaning towards sort of like, you know, the enthusiast driver. There's no real kind of mention of brake regeneration or, or anything like that. It is focused, pure and simple sports car. Good looking car this, I think. If they can pull this off and they can get this into production, I think this is going to be a real standout car in the marketplace, especially if you're in the market for a Porsche Cayman or a Lotus Amira. Now look at the rear of the bodywork, as I say, you've got this cam tail at the back with this kind of separate rear kind of bumper and then third layer diffuser down there. Of course, Caterham don't really have a design language as such because, as I say, they've been basing their production cars on something that's, well, you know, 70 odd years old. So it's time for them to put their stamp on something. It's time for them to really sort of like lay the groundwork for what future Caterhams may look like. And I think they've hit the ground running with this. I love the rear end of this car, the kind of big Caterham sort of like across the back and these lovely kind of split tail lights here. As I say, if the production car comes out looking anything like this, they really do have a winner on their hands. But what do you think? Is this something that would interest you? Would you choose this over something like a Porsche Cayman or of course a Lotus Amira? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now somehow it doesn't seem right to discuss the word practicality when we're talking about Caterham, but in fairness, they've managed quite well. The thought process is this, the car will be a 2 plus 1 as standard, so a three-seater car with a 2 plus 2 option. But even if you're thinking that probably no one else is going to be able to sit in there, at least it's extra luggage space as well. So, and obviously, as I said, if you're coming from something like a Caterham 7 and you've, you've got an expanding family and you want to stay with the brand, then they've got to move with the times and they've got to offer you something that has an element of practicality about it. Look what Porsche did with the KN. Well, I've driven a few sports cars in my time, and I've driven a few Caterhams in my time, and this is unlike any other Caterham that I've been in. It's a really simplistic layout, um, which suits the sort of like the style of Caterham as it was. But what you have is a cabin you probably could do a reasonable journey in. Your seats well, they hold you exactly where you want them to be. And you've got this very kind of simple three-spoke um, steering wheel here. Wonderful little um, LED sort of display dials. It's two separate dials with a little digital display at the top there. And then, of course, in the centre stack, what you have is um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, so smartphone mirroring. So again, bringing sort of like the tech from the phone into the car rather than the car needing it. There is a regen button here, so obviously they're planning on some form of regenerative braking, but obviously 
there's no transmission as such. You've just got on the side here a rotary dial for your park, reverse, neutral and drive. And then nice old fashioned kind of toggle switches with the kind of aluminium dividers between them and then the rest of the kind of cluster gauges that you want in terms of your battery readout there, your clock and then your mode button there. Now there's three driving modes in the vehicle. There's normal, sport and sprint. None of this eco rubbish when you're talking about a sports car. I think this is a really, really well thought out cabin. It's very simplistic. So it again keeps the kind of catering ethos of keeping everything kind of simple and light. But it's still comfortable enough, certainly for two, possibly even more. I think it's a really good idea, this cabin. I like it. So in terms of battery, what are you looking at? Well, potentially a 55 kilowatt hour battery that should give, according to WLTP figures and the projected figures, a range of around about up to 245 miles. It's a lithium ion battery, uh, lithium ion battery and it's got a quite advanced thermal management and that's one of the key areas with this because what they're looking at is potentially being able to charge at speeds of up to 150 kilowatts, meaning a 20 to 80 percent charge could take as little as 15 minutes which is absolutely ideal when you think about it. If you're going to go out for a, a Sunday morning blast or you know, take it on even a grander tour, you won't be stopped for too long charging this back up to 80%. Now, projected performance stats for this car are impressive. It has a 268 brake horsepower motor, meaning it should do the 0-60 to sprint in around about four and a half seconds. Now, let me put that into perspective for you. A Lotus Amira two liter four cylinder turbo does the same not to 60 sprint, four and a half seconds, but it needs 360 brake horsepower. So what have Catrum done with the Project V that makes it as quick as a much more powerful Lotus Amira? Well, it comes down to weight, and that's what I was saying earlier, the weight, which is normally the enemy of the EV, by keeping it really lightweight with very, um, it's sort of like a, a brilliant use of innovative materials in the chassis and the bodywork, mean that the, the projected weight of the Project V, the dry weight, is only 1190 kilograms. The Amira, remember from Lotus, the king of the lightweight sports cars, is over 1400 kilograms. Even a base Porsche Cayman is over 1300 kilos. And this is lighter. They've done their homework well on this. Now, of course, this is going to come at a cost, literally. The projected price for the car could be around about £80,000 if it's a success with customers and it does go into production, which they're looking at potentially being the end of 2025, the beginning of 2026. Now, that is more, obviously, than something like a base Amira or base Cayman. But as I say, bear in mind, the Cayman is going all electric and Porsche aren't exactly a cheap manufacturer. So by the time that comes out, in terms of price, it could be on a parity with the Project V which means it is those two cars that you could be potentially looking at as direct rivals for the Project V. Porsche's new Cayman when it comes out in all electric form and of course Lotus's Amira. But what's impressive is that it's a small company like Caterham that are really taking the fight to those bigger boys. Now of course Lotus is now part of the Geely um, group as well. So of course it now has the backing of a large Chinese manufacturer which to draw from extra technologies that you get through things such as Polestar and Volvo and all the other brands that Geely uh, is in tune with. Whereas Caterham, well they're still a small independent company, albeit they are now owned by the Chinese, they're not part of a big consortium, but it's just through the use of clever engineering and thoughtful design that this is now proven to play with the big boys. Sports cars are the one genre that I think trouble people when we talk about electrification. As I say, when you think about a big luxury SUV or a big luxury saloon car, or even a small family hatchback, making an electric version of it, people are kind of now getting on board with. But it's the lightweight sports car, sports cars maybe even in general, where people have really, really struggled to think how are they going to adapt in sort of like this new electric world. We hear all sorts of people saying to us, you know, the, the, the enjoyment is going to be sucked out of them and how are, how are people going to be able to sort of like interact and the driver enjoyment that you get with a sports car nowadays isn't going to be the same with an electric car. And I think it's interesting that it's a company that cater them, that pride themselves on being the driver's choice, that have taken that sort of like worry, if you like, from people, maybe even some of their customers, and shown that it is going to be possible, that they can move forward into an electrified automotive industry. And if they can do it, if they can pull it off with the lightweight that this car is projected to be with the power and of course the projected range, I think they've got a winner on their hands.
Thank you for watching yet another episode of Auto EV. As always, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Now, once you've done that, press the bell button down below because that way you get notified when our next video is uploaded and it goes live. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure you do give it a thumbs up and don't forget, leave us your comments down below. What do you think of the Project V from Caterham? Is it a car that would interest you? Are you a current Caterham owner? Is this something that would really interest you? Are you thinking about the new Porsche Cayman when it goes electric? Would this make you stop and not order one? just to see if this happens. As always, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, as always, we're across all social media platforms as well. So Facebook, X, LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok. So please do give us a follow there as well, because every little bit does help the channel. And if this has just whetted your appetite, maybe you're new to the channel, you want to know what we're about, then stick on the YouTube channel, because there's just hundreds of videos out there now. Road test reviews, sneak peeks, classic icons, fan reviews, even motorbike reviews as well, for you get your teeth into. All that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching today's episode. I've also got to say a special thank you to HWM in Walton and Thames, my old dealership, I used to work here, for letting me to come in and, and, and do this preview with the new Caterham Project V because they are now the Caterham sales department for the south of England. So if you are interested, then please do give the guys at HWM Caterham a call. All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for watching. I'll see you again soon.